This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Mayfair. I'm joined by heavyweight David Adelaide. Firstly, Happy New Year. How was Dubai? Yeah, it was all right, to be fair. Uh, I needed a break, man. So, all good, all good. I think the whole of London was out in Dubai. Yeah, no, the whole of the England. Forget London. You had Manchester, you had Leeds, you had everyone out there. David, uh, reflecting on your last year, a very active year, some good wins on television as well. How do you assess it? Good year, you know, stayed active. Such a hard time as well, you know. Um, that's the main thing, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I mean, I got I got the job done. You know, um, had three fights in the new year. I mean, sorry, three fights last year, three knockouts. God willing, there's loads more to come in the new year. Of course, uh, boxing suspended for the minute, but it looks like it will resume in February. Is that when you're aiming to get out, David? Yeah, I mean, if I could get out in February two, three times, I would. Do you know what I mean? Um, if I could get out every month, I would. You know, um, the aim is just to try, try to stay as active as possible. You know, in the beginning of your career, it's always good to stay active. So, yeah. Just spoke to your trainer, Frank Greaves. I asked him, why are you so convinced that David Adelaide reaches the top of, of the sport one day? Do you believe, I'll ask you straight, do you believe one day, obviously it's a long way away, do you believe you'll become heavyweight champion of the world? 110%. I mean, I wouldn't be in the game if I didn't believe that. I see a lot of people going in there saying, look, hopefully one day I can win a British title and stuff. But yeah, no, no, no. My, my aspirations are to become unified champion, win world titles, you know, it's to go the whole way. There's no point in joining the game if you're only coming in to try to do a little bit. You might as well go the whole way anyways. Frank said, Frank Greaves, your trainer, said that your mentality combined with your talent and the fact that you're progressing every day under him, he's seeing them progressions, uh, are the reasons why you're going to go to the top. Do, do you feel like you need to add anything to that or are those reasons why you will get to the top? No, there are reasons why I get to the top. You know, you need to have the right team around you. You know, um, end of the day, it does matter. People always say, you know, it's about the boxer, but yeah, the team matters as well. Because no disrespect, there's a lot of fighters at the top of the tree that can't really fight. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of them will get their ass kicked if they came down to like my sort of level. You know, um, I nearly get there because they've got a good team around them. So the team does really matter. They do guide you to the top of the tree. David, from what we've seen. So far, a lot of people have been pressed. How many more layers do you think there is to David Adler? So many, man. I mean, I'm, when I'm doing sparring, there's so many different things I'm doing, you know. Um, but I've been in the game a long time now, man. Um, so many different more layers. Up. I mean, uh, it's, it's a waiting game. Like, like you said, though, isn't it? It's a long, long way. I mean, it's a long career. I've got at least another 15 years in the game. So I've got a lot, a lot to show people. You have to be happy with a start, though. Like I believe you're only, what, 24 years old at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 24, uh, TV every time, uh, or live on BT Sport. You're producing these knockouts. People are noticing you. And also, of course, the fact that you sparred Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, the two best heavyweights in the world. Um, people are recognising that, and that must be so good for yourself as well, to be in, to be in the ring with them. And that's going to go a long way for you, isn't it? Yeah, you know, like, look, these guys, obviously, at the top of the tree, and I'm literally starting out. You know, um, so there's, there's no real complaints. It's like a 400 metre race. Look, I've just started a 400 metre race, and you've got Tyson and Joshua in the last 100 metres. You've got me just starting off my first 100 metres. You've got like a lot of these other fighters that are in like their second 100 metres, and I'm catching them now. I'm starting to catch them, I'm starting to catch them. But, you know, before I catch obviously Fury and jo um, Joshua, the race will be finished. They'll be done and dusted. So I still got a lot of people in my sort of race that I'm catching up with now that I'd love to compete against. We will discuss the sparring in a bit, but I just want to focus uh, on your plans really for this year and next, moving into next year. Um, there's a, it's an interesting mix at, at the kind of British English scene at the moment. How many more learning fights do you think you need before you kind of get to that that stage? Look, of course I need learning fights. I'm not even, um, you know, I'm not that naive. I know I need learning fights. But um, if they said to me now, look, look, David, look, do you want to fight for the British title in your fifth fight? I'd be like, yeah, 110%. And if they said it's against so-and-so, I'd be happy about it. Because, you know, I think I'm going in there to stop these fellas. But um, it's around the people, it's for the people around me. Learning fights, I probably just need, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to fight for the British this year. Yeah. If I could fight for the British at the end of this year, that would be perfect for me. It might be difficult as well during this pandemic situation yeah. to get them learning fights, you might actually have to jump straight into that British level scene and, and you've just said you're happy to do that. So, yeah. happy yeah. days. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they said to me now, you know, we've got these guys in line for the British, you know, you've got to start chipping away at these sort of boys to get there, then I'll be like, let's do it, you know. But um, 
I mean, it was one thing me, me saying let's do it, and there's another thing them saying let's do it, or another thing of them letting it happen. So, uh, yeah, you know, on my on my half, on my behalf, it's, it's easy. It's an easy fight to be made. Ready, guys. Of course, your your, your theories, your Joshua's, your Joyce's are, are right at the top of the tree, and then below that, I talked about the mix. So we'll discuss some some names. An obvious one that stands out firstly potentially could be a big fight is uh, is Nathan Gorman because he's a Frank Warren fighter. Um, both uh, well-known heavyweights. Uh, it, it could it could become a, a big fight one day, David. Is that fair enough? Yeah, I think I'll become a big fight. You know, under, both under the same banner, easy fight to be made. You know, um, I mean, look, that's a fight I'd like to take. Do you know what I mean? We both, I think we're both the same age. Also, we don't look it. He looks about 40, but no disrespect. But we're both the same age. I mean, look, like we're both under the same banner. Let that fight happen, man. And yeah, man, I mean, let the best man win. You are only uh, four fights into your career. We've got to remember that. But let's say that fight with Gorman happened this year. What do you believe happens in that ring? I stop him. 110%. No ifs, no buts. I think I stop him. Well, I know I stop him. Simple as that. Simple. Let me ask you about a heavyweight fight we just saw uh, at the end of the year. Obviously, you box on the undercard. Dubois, Joyce. What did you make of the actual ending? We haven't really spoke since then. Uh, the actual ending? Obviously, I never saw that happening. You know, the medical reports come out and it obviously shows that it, the injury was way worse than people expected it to be. But, um, look, the boy tried up until then, to be fair, you know. It's not like he was backing up. It wasn't like he wasn't stuck in his shell. We actually tried. So, um, you know, credit to him. Joyce did what he had to do, though. Jab work wonders, stay composed under attack. And, you know, um, good fight. I think the boy obviously comes back, still does his thing. Because mm. I think the boy still beats a lot of heavyweights that are out there now. And obviously Joyce just moves on to world level now. Another fighter around that scene uh, is a certain Fabio Wardley as his win against Richard Larty. Is that a fight you'd welcome this year as well if it, if it presented itself, David? Yeah, that's a fight. Look, he's not, under my, he's not even under the same banner as me, so I can't really talk on him, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, if that fight presented itself, I'll take it. Do you think that's unrealistic, that fight? This year, more than likely, because look, he's under a different sort of... He's obviously under a different sort of um, promotion, so... That's a fact that won't really happen. Him I won't really talk about, and especially because in their interviews and that, when I watch their interviews, I don't really hear my name getting mentioned, so I just don't even want to give them the time of day as well. But, um, yeah. In terms of the learning fights, what about someone like a, a Cash Alley? Is that, is that a fair opponent, maybe middle of the year, these kind of guys? Yeah, all of these guys are good. You know, I, I sparred them not long. I sparred them for my last fight, actually. All of these guys, all of these guys, you know, I feel like I'm ready for all of them. Do you know what I mean? I'm... Trust me, like, I'm very confident in myself. I'm very, very confident in myself. And, you know, I think I got it's the things you don't see that matter, like my heart and stuff. I mean, I've got a big heart. I've got big balls. And trust me, like, I don't mind going in there with these big boys and standing there as well and trading with them. I know a lot of these guys talk about weight and all of these other things. And, mate, I've been in there, done that. It doesn't really matter. Once you get to a certain size, everyone bangs. And especially like me. Well, Frank believes that a lot of people in that division carry a lot of excess weight. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, they're all fat. They eat, you know. If I was to eat and sit on my arse all day, I'd, I'd weigh about 130, you know. But um, thank God I've got good genes and stuff and I stay active. I mean, even when I'm not training, I walk around at the same weight I fight at. A lot of these guys, I'm, I'm hearing people in fighting that talk about they've lost X amount of weight and it's just crazy. How do you even get to that sort of weight? What do you eat? It doesn't make no sense. Do you take inspiration from, like, any old heavyweights? Do you watch, like... Old boxing a lot. Or... Holyfield my main man. Yeah. I love watching Evander Holyfield. Animal. I mean, he was a small heavyweight as well, but he beat the brakes off a lot of heavyweights. And when he lets his hands go, he's a serious fighter. I like Evander Holyfield. I like Roy Jones Jr. You know, watching Lennox Lewis. Um, of course, Muhammad Ali. It's funny, I was watching Tyson the other day and that man was an animal. You know, when he was letting it on his come up, he was an actual animal. There's not a lot of heavyweights right now that do them sort of things. And, you know, I think in a time like now, and the area we're in right now is so easy to stand out as a heavyweight boxer. And I think that's probably why I'm getting the recognition I get because I stand out from these other fighters. So, yeah. Would you say Holyfield's your favourite out of a lot of that? Wager Jr. is my favourite fighter. But in terms of watching fighters and like and learning off a lot of fighters, I'd say Evander. Because obviously I ain't got a style like Roy Jones, but I'd, I'd say Evander. David, let's go back uh, to last year where you were in the ring with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Just... Give me a, an insight 
and just open up a little bit on the spar and we'll start with Tyson Fury what is it like to spar Tyson Fury um, what you see is what you get he's awkward um, slippery fast he bangs harder than people expect this is the thing a lot of people don't realise that you bang harder than people expect um, he banged harder than a lot of heavyweights I've been in there with and I've been in there with a lot of heavyweights he banged harder than them so um, yeah I mean yeah, like I said what you see is what you expect the awkwardness is there and you know he does all of that sort of stuff and he holds on to the ropes you know so yeah what would you say is the most impressive thing about him his ring position and he throws punches depending on where you are basically he wouldn't just waste no shots you know, and um, yeah, everything is a thought process for him. He just doesn't let his hands go. He knows what he's doing, but he can a couple steps ahead of everyone else. Efficient and smart. Yeah, then. exactly that, exactly that. And uh, for yourself, I know you can't say too much, but how did you get on with him? With Tyson? Yeah. I think I've done very well, you know. He called me back for the second time, so I must have done all right, you know. And um, he was always talking highly of me, so I think I've done well. And in terms of the other heavyweight world champion, Mr. Anthony Joshua, um, how did that come about? You getting called into his camp? Management got in contact, and then they just started speaking to my management. And um, yeah, you know, one thing led to another, and then I just went down there and um, we did some rounds as well. I mean, another good fighter, AJ. Um, he's not the fighter he once was when he stands there stationary. You know, he likes to box now. He moves a lot. Uh, a lot of the stuff he was doing against Pulev, I could see he was doing in sparring. He was actually working on them sort of things in sparring. So, yeah. Would you say, obviously, watching on, on television Anthony Joshua a few years ago to being in the ring with him uh, wow. la late last year, would you say he's uh, thoroughly improved? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when I was going in, when I was, when I got the call up to go in there sparring, I've gone in there with the intention of thinking I'm going in there to, you know, trade some real leather as well and we're going to land some big bombs on each other. Mm. Yeah, we did land big bombs on each other, but um, he boxes a lot more than people expect him to as well. He's got a good, he's got a good jab. He's fast, he's got fast with his jab, but he's got a good right hand. Are you looking forward to that potential fight between uh, yeah. Joshua and Fury? Oh, I'll be watching that fight as a fan. You can ask my prediction, fight week. I think fight week is when I give my prediction, but other than that, I'm not really going to say much. It's a fight I'm loving. I'm going to love to watch though. You're like a unique person to talk to about that fight because there's not many people who spar Joshua and Fury. How long was it? How long was the time gap between the two? A week. A week, you know what? I sparred AJ one week, gone home, I literally like got more stuff and whatnot, and then gone down straight to Fury's camp. I swan AJ on like a Thursday, Friday, swan Fury on a Monday. That's mental, that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know what's so funny? When I was mentioning it to people beforehand, people were saying, Look, these guys are at the top of the tree, you sure you want to be doing that? I'm like, What? Obviously. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's part of the game I'm in. It's, when I throw myself in the deep and I, I'm going to know if I can swim or not. So, yeah. Let me ask you this then. I don't want you to give a prediction because you're not comfortable doing that. But after sparring Tyson Fury one week and then Joshua the other week, how does that fight play out stylistically in your head? Ding, 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 round one. I see Fury rushing to the centre. I see AJ rushing to the centre. I see, I see Fury doing his whole little feint. I see AJ touching with a jab. And then, boy, the rest is history. That's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to say nothing else. Fight week, you'll see. David, um, it's a, an exciting journey, uh, it's fair to say, that you're, you, you started here. Uh, Londoner, heavyweight, um, exciting to watch. Um, how, do you, how do you view this year coming up and uh, your career in general? How do you see everything going? Very well. I see myself taking some stepping stones, stepping up, climbing up the ranks, um, chipping away. And then at the end of the year, I'll probably see myself fighting for a title. And then, I mean, next year, that will be my third year as a pro. I see myself fighting for some big belts. I, honestly, I know it sounds crazy and stuff, but you see, like, the Pulevs and stuff, I'll take them next year, 110%. I, I, and I've actually said that, you know, um, I probably shouldn't be saying on camera, but, yeah, the Pulevs and stuff are the sort of people I want to be taking on next year. How comes? I think I'll kick his ass. Seriously. I think I, I've seen that guy fight live in the flesh as well. Yeah, no, they're the sort of people I think I can beat. Seriously, literally. Anyone else? Why Kubrat Pulev in, in specific? P no, Pulev, Parker, these, these are the sort of names that I kind of want to be going for. Of course, I'm not going to start rushing them. Next year, I mean, if this year goes the way I expect it to, the next year, these are the sort of fights I want to be taking. You know, if this year goes slower than expected because of the virus again and this whole sort of pandemic, then of course, you know, we hold off these sort of fights. But um, 
yeah, if this shit goes as smooth as I want it to, you know, and um, I start winning a certain amount of titles and stuff, then I might as well just start looking at the international scene, mm. you know, so. Well, let's hope it's, it's like um, from summer to what it was to Christmas. I know we had the, the pandemic going on, but boxing actually was really thriving. So yeah, yeah. from February ho- uh, onwards, let's just hope it, it goes like that and then well, you can we'll develop this year. Starts again in February. You know, yeah. of course, we're going to get the review back end of the month and whatnot. But, you know, yeah, hopefully boxing starts again in February and, and we go from there. Is the, the dream one day to eventually go to America? Does that bother you? Do you want to stay here? See, the American thing doesn't really bother me, I'll be honest, you know. I'd rather conquer the UK scene, you know, um, stay here. I would fight in Africa as well. I would rather fight in Africa than in the US. That's just the truth. Everyone How goes, comes? Everyone goes to the US, you know, it's nothing new, is it? I mean, what's different about, what's different over there than they are here? The Pers- That's true, that's true, that's true. But you know, like, in terms of that, you can't beat British fans though, can you? So, um, yeah, I mean, look, if, if, if the move in my career was better for me in the US, then yeah, I would go there. But um, if the persons are the same in the US and are the same in, in, over in Africa, I'll go Africa. Where in Africa? Nigeria. Okay, that's where your parents are from? Yeah, 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 I'd love to fight in Nigeria and, you know, bring the, bring the belts back there. Well, yeah. What was that? Sorry, no, it was my finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, yeah, so, um, I'd love to go to Nigeria, or fight over there. You know, I like to fight in the UAE. I, I think all these experiences are good, man. It's good to say. I would like to fight in the US. Don't get me wrong. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's not my priority. It's not a prerogative of mine. Where it's like, oh, I want to be fighting in the US. I don't have visions of me. For, I don't have dreams, and I don't just have daydreams like, oh my God, the USMGM or whatnot. I'd like to fight there, though, of course. Do you know what I mean? Um, if I could fight there now, then it would be perfect. Well, listen, on that note, David Adelaide, thank you very much for talking to you IFL know. TV. Uh, wish you a, a big 2021. Also, before we go, are you going to get a new nickname or are you going to stick with Big D? And how did that come about? Sounds a bit wrong, isn't it? Uh, I mean, I don't even know how it came in, but I think I got called in to my wedding one time and I was like, David, Big D, Adelaide. I was like, well, they ain't lying, but let me go in. But... Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the nickname, I leave that for the people at home, the supporters, to give me one. I can't really make one myself, can I? It's a bit, it's a bit different. Can you just stick with Big D? Yeah, I might just stick with Big D, so you never know. Big D, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. We'll catch up soon, all right, brother? That's all, brother, that's all.